It's very good that Britain is a leading player in the international humanitarian effort, and certainly the Department for International Development is a leader when it comes to making efforts inside Syria and in the neighboring states. But Britain does have a moral duty, uh, in my view, uh, to provide the support for people who have a well-founded fear of persecution and therefore qualify as refugees. Uh, the newspapers reported today that the European Commission is going to propose the resettling of 160,000 uh, refugees from the Syria conflict uh, over 2016, and obviously Britain has to take its fair share. I think I'm right oh. in saying that the figure for this year so far in the UK is 215, and that is clearly wholly inadequate. And Britain has to move from taking tens of refugees to taking tens of thousands of refugees. But of course, Britain is saying that we've taken some 5,000 over the last few years, but at the same time, when you say Britain must take more, and must take more, particularly in 2016 as we move on with this, what is more? Well, more, I think, means a minimum of the 10,000 figure that's been around. If you take the European Commission figure that was reported today of 160,000 across the European Union, there are 28 countries of the European Union, some are big and some are small, Germany is clearly the largest, but I think we're talking uh, tens of thousands, so that means 10, 20 or even 30,000 in the UK. Just for the benefit of perspective, remember when the Kosovo crisis was at its height in the late 1990s, Britain took 75,000 refugees. No one is going to persuade me that 25,000 refugees, which amounts to 40 refugees per parliamentary constituency. You're based in New York, you've been in the field. What does the sort of shambles that is Europe's response to all this look like from that perspective? Well, Europe's response is the best and the worst. I mean, the response of Germany, frankly, has been extraordinary over the last uh, six months. Yeah, but that's uh, Germany, not in the Europe. Last, uh, three or four weeks. The, yeah, just as well, Germany is a leading player in Europe. But in, in fairness, it is a European crisis. It's where they are now ending up, and Europe seems to be failing. Uh, you, you may talk well of Germany, but the fact is that Britain, Hungary, uh, many of these other countries are not doing well in this crisis. And one wonders genuinely whether, added to the Euro crisis, this doesn't spell a pretty bad moment for Europe. You're, you're absolutely right uh, to, to, to link this both to the Euro crisis and, frankly, to the Ukraine crisis, which took a lot of attention, or has taken a lot of attention over the last year. The, the, eye, the eyes of politicians have not been on this looming uh, crisis. And I think that the summit on the 14th of September is really an absolutely vital moment for the European Union to show that it means business. Well, you, finally, you have made the distinction between uh, refugees and migrants. But the fact is that on the North African coast, there is a migrant crisis. Uh, it's coming from Eritrea, it's coming from uh, Nigeria, it's coming from all sorts of countries uh, where, where it seems very hard to define them as refugees. What do you do about the migrants? This is a world 200 million people are on the move around the world as economic uh, migrants and they don't have the same rights of refu uh, as refugees. What's dangerous is that there is a lowering of the rights of refugees to that of economic migrants and that would, I think, be a retrograde step of a really terrible kind.